Jordan with the power. Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole Salter, and I am your moderator for this evening. We have a special guest in the house. Before she speaks, I would like to clean house a little bit. We want to make sure our mics are on mute when she is speaking. She is a very respectful lady, and we are going to give her the respect that is due. So any background noise that you have, we'd like to keep it to a minimum. You can keep your mic, you can keep your mic on mute so that she is not disturbed as she is speaking. In order for our host to, in order for us, I, I apologize. In order for us to get the most out of this session, we need to agree on three things. One, Jesus is our savior. Number two, he died for our sins. And number three, we can do all things through him. We have a, a guest speaker tonight. Oh, we also have a mantra, which I forgot. Our mantra is we are powerful beings and we can use our powers to empower others. And that is exactly what we are going to do tonight. We are going to use our powers to empower everyone that is listening here, everyone that is on the replay, to be powerful beings in the gifts that God has given them. So let us begin. I want to introduce our speaker tonight. Her name is Leanne G. Bowley. She is a theater director, a choreographer, an educator, an activist, and I'm sure she has tons of great information and experience to share with us. So let's welcome her to the platform today and give her a warm welcome. Leanne, we thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much. I, I feel very welcomed and I'm very pleased to be here. I, and I thank you for having me because this is a really cool opportunity to share some of my knowledge with some other folks who might be interested in doing things. And and we're, that's what we're going to concentrate on today is the doing of the things that are in our mind. How are we going to get it from these lovely brains of ours out into the world? So that's what we'll focus on. Feel free to ask questions as we go. I'm, I don't get tripped up. I, I talk for a living, part of my living. So feel free to interrupt with questions or ask anything. Um, but I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to today talk about making it happen. And how do we get from our dreams into the reality of the world in front of us? What I'm sharing with you right now is a workbook that you'll have access to. You can access it on my website and I can share the link. Um, it's a PDF, so you can either print it out, write on it. You can grab your notebook and go digital if you'd like. Um, so we're going to talk about... Strategic planning, which sounds really like snooty and scary and all these things, but it's it's not. It's We all do it every day. When we're thinking about our day ahead, we strategically plan how we will move through the day, whether it's do we have to get our gas beforehand or the night before. We were just talking about that. Or, you know, if you're in, the, in New York City like I am, what are the trains you're going to take for the next day? Does my Metro card have everything on it that I need? So these are things that we have naturally that it just takes a little bit of organization, a little bit of confidence, um, and a lot of faith to believe that you can do what it, you are planning on doing. So this can be used. I have a few ideas here. Maybe you're thinking of starting a new company. Maybe you're pivoting your company, or maybe you're thinking, I want to start a new career, a new product, a service, an event, a production. So I, I've, I've done all of these things and I, I find that though there might be a few little things that are different as you go, the main structure of this kind of planning is really the same. And I, I actually gives me a lot of confidence in my own work to know I've done this before and know that you have all done this before. You might not have realized it, but you have. So let's start by um, what I would say is the first thing you do get those ideas out. So grab a journal, grab a piece of paper and take a second, maybe even right now to think about what are your big ideas? What is your big dream? What is the thing that if you could do it, your life would be better and the lives of others would frankly be better because you're living your truth. And I'm guessing if you're here, you have a vision beyond yourself as well. And I think that's important too. It's 
a lot easier, I find, in my life when I have ideas that are going to help others as well as myself, or maybe sometimes even not myself. But what what is that motivation? So you think about what is my motivation? What is my big dream? And I'm going to tell you a story that Jory is very involved in. (laughs) My big dream, um, in college, I started a dance concert. I I grew up training in dance. In college, we were training with each other. And I started this dance concert, and I brought in a lot of new people to dance, including Jory. And then I graduated. I still directed for a little bit. Yep, there she is. And... um, I was, I was as an alum, I was helping direct the dance concert for the current students. And I was like, oh, I wish I could do this all the time. Jory's like, why can't you? I was like, well, I'm, I'm not a prima ballerina. I don't have a track record of dancing with the biggest companies in New York City. That's how you start a dance company. And she pushed me to think, well, is that really how you start a dance company? Do you need a lot of dance company? And also, look, you're doing it. Look up on, we were literally in rehearsal. Look up on that stage, what's happening right now. You can do it. And so I did. And I started a dance company. And, you know, my brother went to Juilliard. It makes sense for him to start a dance company. My sister, you know, has her equity card. That makes sense. But me, uh, you know, who am I to start a dance company? Well, I'm someone who really knew nonprofit, the nonprofit world, because I was teaching people that in my, my first like real professional job was at Foundation Center, which is now called Candid. And write that down if you're in the nonprofits, Candid, C-A-N-D-I-D. It's not the braces company. It's a nonprofit. There's two of them. Go to Candid. They've got tons of free classes on starting a nonprofit, being an artist, and all those things. And those are also things you could always reach out to me and talk to me about if you need a little bit of help or direction. So I was teaching all these classes on how you start a nonprofit, how you build a strong board, how you fundraise. I was like, I have that knowledge. And I was seeing people come in who had dance companies who were coming to me to learn all of that. So I was like, okay, well, I know that. I know my dance. I know my community. Why not start something? So this is a story to say, you know, I, I wasn't an expected person to start a dance company and I did it and I had a very successful run. I'm still a choreographer, but the dance company itself launched careers of other artists throughout the country. It brought community together in ways that was really powerful. We started a, a whole kind of movement of dance and Queens that is really blossoming now. And there's many festivals now, whereas it used to be just a few of us who really loved Queens dance. It's really exploded. So whatever you're thinking you're doing, if you're telling yourself, I can't do it, I'm not qualified to do it. Someone else has told me I'm not good enough to do that. Now is the time to put that aside and write down that dream. And what is it, right? And now that it's written down, how do you go from there? Because it's really feels, it might feel easy to write it down. It might be hard if you're, and I find if you're um, facing a blank page, it can be really scary. So that's what I'm hoping to do tonight is give you a framework where you're not working off a blank page. You have some support, you have some help to get you through that idea phase to action. So you've written down your big dream. You thought about it. Now I'm going to ask you some questions about it. What is it? Identify what it is and be super specific, right? So it's a business. It's an organization. It's a movement. Well, what are you trying to accomplish? What, what is that idea? And just free write for a little bit, write All of your vision out. And then ask yourself, when does it happen? How often does it happen? So if it's a business, you launch it once, hopefully, but maybe you launch another one later. If it's an organization, maybe you're starting it now. Who are your partners? If it's a movement, how many gatherings are you doing? Are you going out every week? Are you going out every day? Are you going out every month? If it's a project, what does that look like? So really start to describe the idea and really think about when is it happening and how often it's happening. So we, we've got that under our belt. And so an example of that for me was with the dance company, I had to start thinking about, okay, how many shows a year do I want to do? How many dancers do I need? Right? Because it's a very different dance company. If you're, you have 30 dancers, if you have five dancers, it's a very different dance company. If you're doing one production a year, or if you're doing 10 productions a year, um, All those things are the things you have to suss out. And then what I say to you is sit down with someone you love, like I did with Jory, (laughs) and ask them, what am I missing? 
and especially about yourself. What am I missing? What are my key strengths that I'm bringing to this that I'm not even thinking about? Because you can list them all, and then I guarantee you, you show it to a friend, and they're going to be like, um, you forgot that award you got. Or you forgot that degree or not, probably you wouldn't forget a degree, but you got, forgot that certificate you got, you know, or that, that training you did that you complained about for three weeks that you were going through it, but you did it and you went through it and you survived. And now you have that accreditation and go beyond accreditations. What in your community, what would people in your community say about you? If, if, if you sat down with the people in your household, what would they say you bring to the table? Bring all of that together, write it down. And that's what I had to do. I had to think, okay, if I don't have, I went to Juilliard like my brother, what do I have to show credibility to others? And I had a lot. And it, it was helpful to talk to other people who knew me well to bring those things to the forefront. So you have your idea. You have what it looks like, when it's happening, how often it's happening, really visualizing that. You've talked to some friends to help you fill in the gaps that you might have missed. Now, we're going to take the focus off of you and your desires and put it out to the world. Because it can be great if you have a great idea, but who is going to take advantage of this great idea? If it's a business, who is your, who is your customer, right? Customer avatar is the biggest thing that everyone's talking about now. Who is that? If you're doing a performance, for example, who are buy, who's buying tickets? Who's coming? And the the thing I would hear all the time, especially when I was teaching at Foundation Center, people would be in, I'd be like, who's your audience or who are you serving? Everyone. That would be the answer. Anyone who wants to come can come, right? Okay, that's great. And we want to be welcoming. We want to be inclusive. Definitely. We don't want to exclude anyone, but we want to think about who that person is really. What are they looking for? It could be any type of person, but what are they looking for? What are they going to get out of what you're doing? And then you go deeper and you're starting to think, okay, if I am selling something, if I have a service for somebody, am I working directly with clients, the people who are going to get the end service? Or am I working with a business or an organization who is then going to take what I'm doing and repackage it or use it for themselves? So for example, if you're at a consultant, are you working with a, it's like for me, I consult a lot of nonprofits and arts organizations. So I can do that arts organization by arts organization and by arts organization individually, or I can go to Queens Council on the Arts, which is our arts council here in Queens, New York, and reach a whole lot of different arts organizations by working directly with, that would be like a B2B, what we call B2B, business to business. I'm working with the arts um, council who gathers all the arts organizations and says, Leanne, come teach budgeting to these folks who are coming from all different organizations, right? And then maybe you have different products or services or performances or whatever your project is for different people. So for example, for Insight, we had programs that focused on youth, middle school youth and Queens. Then we had other programs that focused on a whole family. Then we had other programs that focused more on adult audiences who wanted to go out for a great night out, see some dance, see some friends, maybe go to an after party. Now, if I'm having an after party, it's going to look very different if it's a kid's after party versus an adult's after party, it's simply because they want different things. So that's what we're thinking about when we're thinking about your audience. Who are you serving? What are they looking for? And how are you really reaching their needs? Because you could, like I said, you could have the best idea ever, but if no one's interested or looking for it, that's so much harder to do. Now, a note on that. Say you are doing something that maybe people don't realize that they need, right? And I, I would do this at Foundation Center. We had budgeting classes. And oh boy, the arm twisting I would have to do to get people to come to budgeting classes, even when they were free. Because who wants to sit and talk about numbers? A lot of people were scared by math class when they were younger. And they hear budgeting and they're like, oh my gosh, they're going to make us do some kind of arithmetic. And it scares me. But it's really important for nonprofits and, and folks who work at nonprofits to understand budgeting, right? So then if it's kind of a what I call take your medicine type of product or service, you really have to appeal to people and let them know, don't be scared. Give them confidence. Like I was saying to you, you've all done this before. You've all planned before. This is not new to you. 
Same with people. You've all budgeted before, right? You've all gone into a store and had to think, I have this much money, this costs this, how is this going to work out? So same thing here. You've done this before. Who is your audience? If they don't necessarily know they need your product, how are you letting them know? It's not scary. It's what you need. And this is how your life will be better for taking advantage of what I'm sharing with you. (coughs) Excuse me. And does this audience, um, do they influence each other? So for example, when we would do a kids program, we would sometimes say to the parents, hey, parents, this is great for the kids, but we also have this program for adults, right? If I went to a senior center and did a workshop, I would say, oh, do you have grandkids? We have this great program for, for kids in the neighborhood. So how do these audiences influence each other and how will that affect your work and what you're offering and how can you connect those things. So from there, you have to distill it further. These are lots of questions you have to answer, but I guarantee you once you get through them, you're going to feel like ready to go. So some other questions, who does this idea help? How is the world better? And, And it doesn't have to be a social justice program to make the world better, right? What is one of, think of one thing that helped your day to day. Maybe it was a water bottle, right? Maybe it was an app on your phone that made it easier to get somewhere. I don't know what I did. I don't know how I got anywhere before Google Maps, right? I always say to people, before Google Drive, and this is not an ad for Google, but before Google Drive, how did I share documents? How did I do everything I could do? I said that all the time with Jory when she was on my board for the dance company. I don't know how people started nonprofits before they had all these tools for free. It must have been really tough. So how does your idea help the world? How does it make someone's day easier or better? What do you accomplish by having this idea in the world? And think about it for yourself, but also think about it for your audience. Um, In 2008, after the the unfortunate kind of implosion of the, the economy, I would see a lot of career change people would come to my programming because we taught people who were in the nonprofit sector, but also people who were coming into the field for the first time. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they, I would say, why are you doing this? And they would say, because I need a job, because I need some more income, which is a fine thing to do, but that's gonna, it's not going to get you the job because you also have to think, what are you bringing to the table for others? What is this doing for the world, for others, for the organization? So, so many times people would come in and say, I have this experience. I have this title. I, I should get this kind of job. And I would be like, totally, you're an amazing person. You should get whatever job you want. But when you market yourself and when you're thinking about it, you have to think about what are you bringing to the table for them? Great, you were a VP at a bank. But if you're working for a diabetes prevention council, what are you bringing to the table that transfers to them? Same thing here. What is your idea going to do for the world? And once it's out there, how is it going to impact others? So that's thinking about your audience. Then we get into the famous thing that everyone talks about, but I feel like very few people understand goals and objectives. And I used to teach a whole course on outcomes. Um, We could be here all day if we, we did the full like A to Z on goals and objectives, but I'm going to break it down for you this way. What is the goal of this idea for you and your clients? So we talked about this. What is the goal for you? What is the goal for your audience? And then think about where do those overlap? And most importantly, where do they not overlap? So another thing I would talk to people about, people all the time, I want to start a nonprofit. Great. Why do you want to start the nonprofit? Because I want to make money. I want to have my own business. Problem there. If you start a nonprofit, it's part of the, it's for the public good. No you don't own it. The board gets to tell you what you do because it's in the public trust. So that's just an example. I know I'm using a lot of nonprofit examples. We can get into some business examples too, but the the problem lied in someone had an idea of what they wanted. The reality was that thing was not going to get them what they wanted. So if your idea is, I want to start a business, I want to make income, a nonprofit's not the way to go, not because they don't make money, but because you do not own it. And so if you want to own it, that's, that's a real problem for artists too. They think, oh, I want to start a dance company. You want to start a nonprofit dance company? 
someone can take it away from you. There are actual examples where there are names of arts organizations with a person's name on it, and that person was actually removed from the organization. Same thing for business. If you're thinking, oh, I want to start a business. I want to get involved in whatever is X business. My husband and I were just talking about investing in a certain kind of business. Well, when is the return? (laughs) If it takes five years to make a return on that business and you need the money today, why are you spending your time working for five years? So this is why goals and objectives are important. For, as benchmarks for folks, like you, a lot of people think a goal or an objective, that means by this date, you know, everyone talks about SMART goals. It has to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. And that's great if you're setting up benchmarks for yourself to achieve. I'm asking you to take a step before that and think about what are your goals? What is the reality? And where are they aligned? And where are they not aligned? And can you overcome that? or not. So that business venture that I was talking about, is there a way to make a return faster? Does it mean more upfront investment that we would have to save a little bit more money, wait a little bit, maybe it's six months, but then in the end, we're going to have a return faster. I can't answer this for you. These are things you have to ask yourself. And that's why I say I'm a consultant. A lot of the times you don't need a consultant to figure this stuff out. You know, you need a consultant to hold your hand, give you confidence, or maybe teach you something you haven't learned before, but then you have to do it yourself. So when you're talking to a consultant, when you're talking to someone like me, you're going to these classes all the time. People are like, what's the magic bullet? What are the top five tips? And I can give you tips, but my best tip is you can do it yourself. You can do these things yourself and then identify the people who can help you achieve all those benchmarks. But the first step is you really have to think about what am I trying to achieve? What are the things that are aligned? But then what are the things that are going to cut you off and how do you overcome them before you even get started or do an assessment and say, you know what, maybe this isn't, you know, this is my dream in my head. How do I adjust it? Or is there a different dream I should focus on right now? Because as much as I said, we're going to get those dreams out of your head and make them a reality make sure it's really what you want to do because you're going to be spending a lot of time and energy to try to make this a reality. And if you get six months in and you find out it's not possible because of a law, because of your own circumstances, because of just the way these things work, it's going to be very disappointing. So that's why I think goals and objectives are so important. You can benchmark, you can have smart goals eventually, but first really think about what you're trying to achieve. And that brings me to the second bullet that you see here. What are you open to amending? What can you not change about your idea? We started with three principles everyone had to accept coming into this room, right? What if what you're trying to do means you have to compromise on one of those principles? Is that a game changer? I bet for most of us it is. There might be other things that are negotiable, right? I want to start in July. Well, how would August be? That might be negotiable. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's like, I need this to happen in July because I have the next 10 things that have to happen afterwards. And so if it doesn't start in July, I'm going to have a problem. So I'm going to work, work, work till I get this to go in July. Or maybe you take a little bit weight off your shoulders because really it doesn't have to happen in July. It can happen in August. But that's why planning is important. So let me recap a little bit. One. We're going to get our idea down on paper, right? Literally write it down somewhere. So it's not just in your head. It's out there. You're going to vision it exactly. What, what is your vision exactly? You're going to show it to a friend, family member, someone you trust and have them look it over and see what you've missed. Then you're going to think about your audience. And that's when you start doing your goals and objectives to see if these things align or not. Really think about, is this something I can do? No matter what comes my way, is there anything that's going to stop me? And what are those things ahead of time? Okay. How are we doing on time? We okay? Great. So then this is one of, all these steps are important, but this is one of the most important steps. And this is where I'm going to leave you. And then maybe we can have some question and answer, or I can give some more examples you need to write down what steps you're going to take. And this is where you start doing the benchmarking. And this is where you start having goals that have a time to them, right? It's, I think it's very important. You dream big first. You write all that down. You think about what's good, what's not. 
I almost said about Scoochie. I'm not young enough to use that. <laughs> but what's good, what's not, right? So that really needs to be clear in your head because what I will tell you, people will give you advice. That even people, maybe you bring people onto a board or an advisement board and they're going to tell you things and it can very quickly take you down a different road, right? So that's why I spend so much time talking about what is your idea? Write it down. What are your goals? What are you okay with? For example, actually, George, can I use you again for an example? We we were talking about um, auditions, and I, and for dance artists, auditions. <laughs> I could go on a whole thing about it, but sometimes you have to pay to audition. Sometimes you have to um, go through a whole, like, give up a whole day's work to go audition. Right? It's costing you money to go audition, but one of the reasons dance artists have you pay for their auditions is prices are higher. When I go to rent space for an audition versus a rehearsal, the price is higher, which then in turn, people pass that cost off to the dancers who are auditioning, right? We can talk all about the structural problems with that, but Jory had a very good ask. She was like, why don't we start charging people for this? That's industry standard. We're not doing anything different from anyone else. And I had to know from my heart I didn't want to do that. And I had to have the reasons to tell Jory why I didn't want to do that. Right. I have a brother and sister who are dancing auditioning. I know what that's like for them to have to pay for it. Right. And Jory wasn't wrong for suggesting it. She, she suggested it with her heart open and everything, but, but I needed to know my core so I could answer that question. Right. Happens all the time. I see it with nonprofits all the time. I see it with businesses all the time. Someone gives you an idea and you're like, Oh, Oh, I'm going to go over there. Oh, that grant is available for this. Oh, yeah, we can throw together a program for that grant. Is it taking you off your core? That's going to be a problem. So that's why we do all this planning to start. Then we take the action of saying, what needs to happen? What is my first step? And I I ask you to focus on the first step solely. Sometimes I'm a big picture person. I like to see all of the, the plans lay out in front of me. But sometimes we just have to stop and say, what is the first step I need to take? What needs to be done first so I can take the second step? And who needs to do it? It might not be you who needs to do it. When I started my consulting business, I said to my husband, I was like, I don't want to do the back end. I don't, he, he's a banker. You do that businessy stuff. Let me do the creative and the consulting stuff. And I knew for me that was going to get, but if he could do that for me, that was going to get me closer to my goal of owning my own business, consulting business. Because if it was up to me to file all the paperwork and everything, we we would still be waiting, <laughs> you know? So who needs to do it for you? Are there, are there forms you have to fill out? Does someone have to approve it? Do you have to get, you know, your local council person to approve your block party or something? Who are all the people who need to be there in the first step? What materials do you need and resources? So money, but also the resources. And what do you have? Take stock of what you have already. <laughs> so that's how much does a step cost and do we have the funds to do it or do we have other means of making it happen? Is it a barter situation? Is it that, you know, your, your auntie always said she would help you out. And this is the one time you're going to ask her for a little bit of help. Is it that you could, you have a good group of friends who could help you get started. Maybe they can help you by volunteering instead of having to lay down costs right away. And then think about once you have all of that out, then you think about what the next step is, step two. And it can be a baby step. It doesn't have to be a big step. It might be, and then I assess where I'm at, which is a very fine step to have. And I think we're, we're mostly women on this, right? So um, I think, and this is a generalization and it's not true. And it's very culturally different depending where you at. But for a lot of women I speak to, we take on a lot on ourselves and we have to think, we think we have to do it all by ourselves and it has to be go, 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 go. We've always got to be going. And I ask you when you're thinking about your steps to think about adding steps that include rest and adding steps that include assessment. Because when you go, 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 you might be 10 steps in and go, oh my gosh, I wish I had realized that I missed X in the past, or maybe there was a better database to use. There could be so many things that you miss because you're going, going, going so fast. You need to work in steps of assessment and seeing how am I doing 
Am I burning out? Do I need more help? Who else could help me? All of those things. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see uh, what else we could be talking about. I could talk forever about this, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of a framework so that if you have something in your head, it can come out. Thank you so much, Leanne. This was very informative. I am one, and Jory can tell you, that struggles with making goals because um, I just don't know how. Like <laughs> all my life, everyone else has made a goal for me, right? Like my parents made a goal for me to graduate high school and then they made a goal for me to graduate college and then I got in a job and they made goals for what my position was going to be within the next year or five years or what have you. And so now that I'm out and I have my own business, I'm a realtor, by the way, I have a few businesses, however, I'm trying to make re real uh, real estate my main business. And so we now don't that try. I'm, we don't try. We succeed. You're right. I we am making try. real estate my main business. And so now that I'm doing it on my own, as I get in my office and I'm like, what do I do first again? What? Where do I write my name? Does it go on the pink paper? Does it go on the blue paper? Who am I helping? Who am I? And everything is just like a question. And so this was very good as far as getting me to like sit down and think what steps do I need to write down on paper? So when I get into my office, I already know who, what, when, where, and why, and how is it all going to come together? So this information was great. I mean, I would love to dive deeper, <laughs> but I need to focus on this first. <laughs> Because then after the we meeting, can definitely do a part two. <laughs> I've done this. I've done this workshop with artists and all different sorts of folks, business, small business folks, and and I really say you need a break. Like these can't be two week in a row types of workshops because you need time to really think through those things. And that's the problem. We've been told all of our lives what we're doing with our life, and I'm almost forty now. I've had an over twenty year career, and I'm finally, finally saying to myself, how do I want to spend my days? What does that look like? And how do I get there? You know, I want to spend my days in the studio. I want to spend my days helping people. And I want to spend my days making a difference in my community. And for the first time in my life, if someone else looked at my career, they would say, oh, you did that the whole time. That's what you were doing your whole career. But for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm doing it, you know, and that, and it's because I did a lot of soul searching. It was like, how am I going to do this? Um, and I have the great experience of doing all those things these years and getting it done. And actually, I was going to say, I was thinking about this before we started. I was thinking the one opportunity I would love to have is rehash this whole make it happen kind of framework in a place where we don't have the restrictions of society and systemic racism and systemic misogyny and all that stuff. Because you'll find... When I'm talking, I'm speaking the language of the business world, of the nonprofit world, of the arts world. I am speaking that language right now, which if you talk to Jory, <laughs> that is not my natural language. My natural language is how are we going to make sure, you know, we get everyone out of prison <laughs> and everyone has housing and everyone has health care. That's how I think. But I've had to put it in the box of the systems that exist. So I did want to say that caveat to y'all, like, if you want to talk about changing the norms and changing this whole structure, we can do that too. And there's a way to do it. But what I, I like about this is that we're focusing on ourselves first. And again, as women, so often it's like, well, I want to serve others or I want to do these things for other people or how can I, I need to do this for my children? You know what I mean? Which is all true. But I think there's, when you think about what you want yourself first, and of course it's to help your kids but it's through what you can do and what you can bring to the world and they'll be happier and you'll be happier and everyone will be happier in your life if you're kind of living your truth. So Nicole, I think that's a great example. And I think taking the time to think about what do you want 
it's not selfish. It helps your direction and helps you move forward. I, I like to swim a lot. So it's like having a really cool swimsuit that helps you glide through the water better instead of all the, you know, wearing, if I wore this sweater dress in the, in the water, it would really drag me down. You know, we want to get rid of that drag. So, um, thank you. Um, I'm afraid to speak too long because I feel like I'm going to start coughing again, but, (laughs) um, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, I think I'm just really concentrating on not coughing. All right. So, (laughs) um, so I kind of feel like I never knew that part about, um, like seed planting. And I feel like, I feel like when, when the more I speak to people, um, the, the more I'm, I'm convinced that I think, (coughs) and it begins, um, (coughs) I'm going to get it out there. I don't care. Um, I think that there's real power in us speaking now my mic wow wow this is an attack okay I think there's real power in speaking life into people in their dreams I think um that so often we are we allow ourselves to be um sidetracked derailed discouraged thrown thrown off our track or thrown aback when we give our power away to people uh, who never deserved it in the first place, right? Um, instead of protecting those dreams, protecting, right, those God-given visions, because honestly, I believe that at the core of everything, like God God is a creator. He's the dopest creator in all the universe. Um, and so he created the universe, right? So the the things that we have on our hearts, the things that are bursting at the seams to get out and, and, be, and be birthed and, and come to life, they're planted there by God. And it takes, I'm, I'm, I'm be, I'm be straightforward. It takes godly people. It takes godly people to see that God vision in you to speak life into it for it to start growing and take root. Like there's, there's no way because this is the craziest part, Leanne. I've had the same conversation, not the same, right? I didn't help mad people like start dance companies. I didn't, (laughs) right? But seeing like, there's this thing that you love. There's this, this, you have this passion. You have this glow about, you have this fervor, this like, you could talk about this all day long, like for real. Um, Why aren't you doing something with it, right? And it was funny because someone had that same conversation with me two years ago. And I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) It was odd because it wasn't like, I didn't know how to make goals. Like I had consultant for like, when I, when I think back, like (laughs) my, my career and, and just some of the places that God has allowed me to go and experiences he's allowed me to have, I'm like, you are not qualified for any of that stuff. <laughs> like, you weren't. Um, you know, I wasn't, right? The police athletically hired me as like one of the second highest paid consultants uh, for the, um, the Carolyn White grant uh, that was, you know, uh, given by Michelle Obama, like during the Barack Obama, you know, um, presidency. And I was just like, it was me and two other candidates out of, out of like the whole situation. And it wasn't just New York. It was like DC was Philly. It was a lot. And I was like, it's me and two other candidates. And I got picked. Now I'll be honest with you. I think I got picked because my name is sexually ambiguous. Uh, (laughs) so I don't think, I don't think they knew what was happening (laughs) because nothing was in person because it was, it was such a large area and there was no Skype at the time. There was no zoom. So there was no way for them to see me. Um, And if you hear me, you're like, I I don't really know what I'm listening to. (laughs) I'll be honest with you quite, quite frankly, uh, initially, but um, I, 
I say that to say that, like, I think sometimes we get stuck in how we view ourselves and how other view others view us to the point where we are too afraid to walk into what God has already given us. Like we're too afraid to actually take that step because we can't see it. And so I think part of what could be added to this, you say, what's the first step you need to take in addition to what needs to be done, who needs to do it? Maybe what environment do I need to be in? Right? Because the people around you matter. They matter a lot, a lot. Um, and it, it, it doesn't matter all the strategic planning you do. If you are surrounded by lazy, no good, lack of ambition, having humans, your dream is not going to go anywhere. It's not. It's going to live in you and it's going to die in you. One of the richest places in the entire world is a graveyard because it's full of all unfulfilled dreams. It's full of uh, dreams of riches and, and, and marvelous inventions and creations that will never see the light of day. And I, I listen to like the same thing over and over again every day because I'm just like, I have today. That's all I have. I have today. That's all I have. I have today. And I have to make the most out of today. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, I love, I, I, Nicole could tell you, I, I man, I love me some practicals. <laughs> I love me some practicals. Um, and everything that you shared today was easy to digest. It was easy to put into practice. Um, and it's something that honestly, you can go back and keep revisiting. Like you can use these exact same questions as part yep. of your assessment. Yep. Right. Um, so part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask myself these questions <coughs> during my quarter assessment because, uh, so Nicole, what you and, and whoever listens to this don't know is that uh, in the earliest stages of our business, Leanne actually consulted Ron and I. Uh, she did our strategic planning uh, for the beginning stages of IYH. Um, so if you're like, wow, like, how are you doing all this? You're amazing. How did you, oh, it's cause Leanne, <laughs> she gave us a lot of, uh, incredible information. I mean, like, yo, like for real, I, I'm like, I got a homie. It's like 18 years in the game <laughs> and teaching, training and consulting other businesses. Why am I not calling her? <laughs> like, why, why am I not asking for advice? And I think that's the other part. Like people have to know, like part of your resources are the humans around you, which is why the humans around you need to know something like they, they have to, like, you don't have to be a user of yeah. these people, but you know, uh, part of, I think what people don't understand with bartering is you can barter people's knowledge and expertise. Also, it doesn't have to be a good or a service. Right. Um, it could be what they know or who they know even. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely. Thank you. Listen, this is much more than 30 minutes, but uh, it, it needed to be. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot of good stuff. And uh, please reach out to us um, or reach out to Leanne. I'm going to put her uh, web address in the uh, show notes for this podcast viewing. Uh, I'm going to put her email also. Wow, the real email? You just throwing it out there to everybody? To everybody? You put that in the show notes? Your whole real email. Okay. Yeah, all right. yep. Put my whole email. I mean, if, if you send me mean stuff, that's not cool. So don't <laughs> send me mean stuff. <laughs> I'm here for you. We, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have mean viewers, so it's all good. Um, no, no. I, that's why I figure it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm not concerned. Um, but really, like, if, if anyone has a question, let me know. And I, I have so many resources in my head that I can send people. So, you know, really feel free to reach out if this resonated with you. I, I'd be happy to get you started. So you hear what she said, folks, right? If this landed for you, go ahead, pick up that phone, pick up that phone. I feel like I'm in the 1990s all over again. Pick up that phone. Nobody, nobody picks up a phone and calls anybody. Uh pick up your phone or your computer or your iPad or your tablet or your Android or just have Alexa do it uh, and email the end. <laughs> uh, for at least this digital download. This digital download is dope, folks. You you were able to see a little bit of it when she shared a screen, but um, it's amazing. I have the actual version. 
Um, I tried to share it with Nicole on the low low, but Leanne got it protected or something. I don't know. You got to <laughs> you gotta go through Leanne to get it. It's protected. But it should be because it's a valuable resource, people. Um, He's sending you an email shortly. Yes, yes, as you should. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for tuning in to this episode of 30 Minutes of Power. Uh, again, we are your hosts, Nicole Salter, Jory O'Neill, and our special, special guest, Leanne G. Bowley. Thank you all so much. God bless. We'll see you next time. Peace. 30 Minutes of Power.